Welcome in this video where we are going to implement this paper Voyagenal in France with normalizing flows uh, from uh, Google DeepMind. So this paper is useful if you want to learn uh, normalized densities. Uh, you can often come across those densities in science, finance, uh, statistics, uh, just to, to mention a few. Um, and these are examples of normalized densities. So you, you know the density at every point in, in, uh, in space, but uh, and you can evaluate the density, but they are normalized which means that you cannot sample from them. Um, you cannot sample from them perfectly. You need to rely on approximations, uh, such as rejection sampling, Epontron sampling, um, Monte Carlo sampling, or in that case, neural network. So we will train neural networks that are called normalizing flows in such a way that uh, when the neural network is trained, we can sample from the density and we can also evaluate the density. So we get the best of both worlds. We can both sample and evaluate the density. So I suggest you read the paper on in this uh, in this video. We'll focus on the implementation. These are the results we'll get after this video. So very good results. And this is a reproduction of figure three from the paper with our own code. So let's dive into the implementation. We'll use PyTorch for implementing the, the paper, uh, NumPy for implementing a few helpers, and Matplotlib for plotting the results. We have also set the seed to zero for reproducibility. So let's just create a, a helper function to compute the Gaussian uh, log PDF that will be helpful to compute the density of the base distribution. Uh, on our, in that case, we, uh, we implement it uh, in, a, in a vectorized way such that it can take a batch of input, uh, of input and compute the density of uh, this batch. Then we'll create the, the planner flow class. So this is the base of the, um, of the paper. This is the main uh, component. And by the end, it's pretty simple. So uh, planar flows have a few parameters. So uh, a few parameters, u, w, b, uh, a function, an activation function, h, uh, and also um, we define a function h prime, which is one minus uh, the, uh, the, the activation function to the power of two. So one minus the tangent hyperbolic to the two. Uh, on the, by, by, um, by the way, w and b are just the weight on the bias. And there is an extra parameter uh, u. Uh, the thing is, u, we do not constrain it by default. Uh, u can go from mi minus infinity to infinity. But uh, as it is mentioned in the paper, to ensure that planar flow, flow are bijective, and therefore that uh, yeah, one constraint of normalizing flow is that they should be bijective. And uh, in order to ensure that, you, uh, um, the, the parameter mu should, uh, should satisfy some constraint. So what we'll do, we will uh, always constrain mu uh, with, uh, with this function. So uh, the, the parameter mu can take any value, but then we'll constrain it so that the constraints are unsured on wave invertibility. All those, mat uh, all those maths are uh, detailed in the appendix of the paper. And then the forward function is pretty easy. First, we, we take uh, uh, mu, but we need to constrain it. Uh, and then when it's done, we just compute the uh, hidden unit. So as is a... Uh, as we often do with, uh, with basic neural network, it's just a matmul of W on T plus B, so a, a simple uh, perception. And then we uh, implement the functions from the paper um, in such a way that this will ensure invertibility of the flow. And uh, we track the log determinant of the bijective transformation that will be uh, useful to uh, compute the density of the, uh, of the, of the transformation, to, to compute the Jacobian of the transformation. So now that we have the planar flow, so we're with the base uh, module, now we can combine them um, uh, and stack them one after the other, as we uh, of often do in machine learning. So uh, we have a f uh, the length of our flow, and we will stack uh, a few planar flow one after the other. Uh, on planar flow, um, they, they can, they usually normalizing flow that are constrained. Uh, given an input dimension, the output dimension should be the same. Uh, so we don't need to specify, for example, uh, uh, hidden dimension, output dimension. There is only one parameter, which is data dimension. And then the forward function, it's, uh, it's pretty common in normalizing flows. Usually the, the, the forward function will be the same for all normalizing flows. Uh, it's just the, the base module, the flow that you use for your base uh, class that will change. So in that case, uh, we just iterate one layer after the other and we keep track of the uh, total Jacobian. So every, uh, after, each, uh, after each block, we, uh, we addition uh, the log Jacobian. And then we return 
uh, Z, so the uh, value, uh, the output value on the log Jacobian of the of all the transformation together. And now we're ready. We just need to uh, compute our training function. So it will take a flow as input, an optimizer, will train for a few number of epochs. Uh, we will track we will take a log density, so this is the target density, the unnormalized density on which we want to train the batch size on the data dimension. So as often we create the training loss for logging uh, data, uh, for logging the loss on which rate over a few number of epochs. So first what we will do, we will uh, sample data from the flow. So first we sample data from the base distribution, which is a, a standard Gaussian distribution, and we feed those data to the flow. Uh, so this is uh, very, uh, very uh, similar to GANs, where we sample noise from a Gaussian distribution, and then we feed the, the noise to the GAN, and the, the GAN then generate samples. It's exactly the same with flows, but in that case we have an extra uh, output, which is the log Jacobian of the transformation, which will be useful for training, uh, and also for uh, computing the log density, if you want to do that uh, after training. Then we can uh, evaluate the exact and approximated densities, so the exact log density, we know it because we have the log density function as input. So this is the target density. And then we can uh, compute the, uh, the log density estimated by the flow just by using this formula that is given in the paper. Basically, this is the uh, using the change of variable theorem. This gives you the uh, density of the data points uh, sampled from the flow. And then you compute the Kell divergence between those two densities. And you want to push uh, the Kell divergence down so you optimize this scale uh, divergence, uh, you push it down to zero, and you do a, a gradient step update. And then we're done, we just need to log the training loss and to return it. Now we're done, we'll just create a few helpers. So first a helper to plot the flow uh, density. So we'll take as input a flow, an axe on which we'll uh, plot the, uh, the result on uh, some uh, axe limits, some uh, CMAP title on uh, some extra parameters such as the number of points per dimension. So the resolution in some way. So what we'll do, we will just first sample from the latent space. So as the latent space belongs to a, a Gaussian distribution, uh, the manifold for most of the points goes from let's say minus 15 uh, to 15. Uh, so this is a 2D grid going from minus 15 to, uh, to 15. So basically what we do, we create uh, the manifold of the latent space, because in that case we can do that because we are only in two dimension. So we create the manifold of the latent space. Uh, this is what we do as well there. We create a mesh grid of those uh, uh, from those boundaries, and then we uh, concatenate them to have a single tensor. So now that we have Z, Z our manifold, we can feed those uh, data to the flow. So we uh, sample from all the latent space, or most of it. We feed it to the normalizing flow, and then we get our uh, the large manifold. So all the data points uh, in the uh, data space. Um, generated by the flow for those data points Z. And then, uh, so we, have, we can approximate the density of those points with the log density, and we can take the exponential uh, of it to get the density. And then we can plot it. Uh, so we, uh, we set the X limits on Y limits. And then we call this function color mesh. We uh, plot the data points that have been sampled by the flow, and we, uh, we, we weight them by their density, or we put some colors uh, where the colors uh, depends on the density. Then we set the title, uh, and then we are done with this function, and now we can move on to the function to plot the exact density uh, for comparison. The plot exact density function will take an axis, uh, the exact log density, and then a few other parameters such as the limits on the title. Now we, uh, for plotting the exact log density, we no longer need a uh, latent space. We can directly uh, move to um, to data space. So we create the manifold of the data space uh, within the dimension, uh, within the limits, uh, and then we create. Uh, we we again we make a mesh grid. Uh, we create a single tensor called Z uh, on line 123, and then we can compute the exact log density. Take the exponential of it, so we get we get the, the density, and then we can call the function image show to uh, plot the density. And now we can, uh, okay, before uh, putting everything together, we can create the energy functions that will be used for training. Um, so in the paper, they tested on four uh, densities function for this type problem. So U1, U2, U3, U4, these are the unnormalized densities. They seem pretty complex. Uh, you, you, can, uh, you, you can see much more complex functions in, uh, in science, for example. Um, so these are, type problem or nice functions. So now we can put everything together. We'll uh, train on GPUs uh, for 
uh, that will be faster. Uh, the data dimension on this problem is two, so a relatively simple problem just for testing. Um, and then uh, we can start creating our figure. We'll iterate over all energy function, so we'll test each uh, one of them. Uh, we, uh, the exact log density is the opposite of the uh, potential. Uh, and then we can, uh, yeah, so what we do, we, we create a subplot, the one that you've seen in the, at the very beginning of this video. On the first column, we plot the exact uh, density. And then we skip one column. This is why we do index plus equal to. And then on the third column, we will plot uh, the densities of the first flows. Um, so for each energy function, we'll uh, train different flows on them. Uh, with, uh, different flows with different length, so 2, 8, and 32. So for each length, uh, we, uh, we create a flow. We create an optimizer for that flow, and then we uh, we lo we, uh, we we compute the loss and we train that flow uh, for twenty thousand epochs. And now that we've trained the flow, we can plot it uh, just by calling the plot flow density uh, helper that we've implemented uh, previously. And then we can save the result, uh, and we are done. So uh, that's a bit more uh, a bit more lines of code than what we do uh, usually. But yeah, there are a lot of helpers. The, uh, the potential function take quite uh, some space. Uh, but by the end, it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, simple implementation. You need to be careful to constrain mu so that it's uh, within the, uh, uh, it, so that you ensure invertibility. Uh, I really hope this video was helpful to you and that it will, uh, it will help you uh, with your work, uh, with your learning of machine learning. Uh, if it was, please leave the thumbs up. It really helps uh, with this uh, this channel. And please do subscribe uh, for more uh, more content like that. So thank you again for having followed this uh, video. Uh, on good, uh, best of luck with your machine learning journey.